What's up guys, it's uh, your favourite storyteller, Ross Boomsocks here. It's been a while since I told you a story. I haven't been doing daily videos as much recently, in the last week or so, because I have had a lot of stuff going on with my life and I've also been wanting to work all of that time into creating why I hate videos for you guys, which you really seem to enjoy. But here's the story, regardless. This is the story of the time that I uh, was involved in quite a large riot in my city. So you may have heard about the reason that there was a party to begin with. Four years ago, there was going to be a royal wedding. Now, obviously if you're not British, you might not have heard about it. You might not care, there's a good chance you didn't care. But a lot of the world, especially the UK and America, kind of got really excited about the fact that there was going to be a royal wedding. This wedding was between Prince William and Kate Middleton, if you even give a shit. But that was not the main thing that excited Scotland. See, all across the country, People were using this as an excuse to celebrate and to have a, a little drink every now and then. Now, as I discussed in my previous story about the time I ran through a fence, this all started as a Facebook event group. And that Facebook event group was just, let's hang out in Kelvin Grove Park and we'll celebrate the royal wedding. It kind of spiralled out of control from there and police basically said, no fucking way in hell are you guys allowed to do this. However, David Cameron, who is our current Prime Minister of the UK and was at the time, probably tried to earn a little bit of brownie points with the royal family by telling the entire UK, if you want to have a party, go and have a party. That was literally a green light for every single party that was going to take place in the UK. And in Scotland, our biggest one was the Kelvin Grove Street Party. Now, a lot of people have told me in my last few stories, this is not true that I'm lying in my stories and that my life sounds like an anime. I can assure you, this one in particular is documented as having taken place. If you want to fucking go and Google it right now, go and Google Kelvin Grove Street Party. It'll come up on screen right now for you. You can have a look at some of the pictures. I'll be putting pictures throughout the story as well uh, as to what happened. But if you want to yourself go and read about it, then be my guest. I tried really hard to find pictures of me in the party and I remember seeing in the paper me in one of these photos but I cannot find the fucking photo but yeah so the day of the party finally comes and we go to this huge park now this isn't like your average play park this is a fucking massive park and we kind of walk around looking at all the kind of shit that's happening throughout the day there's a lot of people like kind of DJing here and there there's a lot of people drinking there's a lot of fucking trash everywhere but me and some friends, we decided to just go over to one of the DJ decks and we just start dancing, having a good time, drinking, having fun. And it looks like everybody is having quite a lot of fun. There are some kind of uh, shady characters kicking about, but as Glasgow, you really can't kind of judge people by the way they look because, let's face it, we all kind of look like mutants anyway. But regardless, everybody is really, really happy with the way that this is going. There are police nearby. There is a lot of police nearby, but they know that they are in the vast, vast minority of people in that crowd. There's literally like 10 to 15,000 people in this park and they need to be on their best behaviour because if they set one person off, it could just snowball and you know what? It did fucking snowball. So I'm just kind of like partying, having a good time with my friends and there's like lots of little fights kicking off all around the area. Like it's nothing crazy, but you know, a lot of the people who were drinking at this party were underage. You know how underage drinkers are, they get a little bit too big for their boots, they start to cause fights with people, it's just fucking what they do. So obviously with no real malicious intent, the police kind of step in to try and break up a lot of these fights. However, what happens is that when they try and split up fights between people, the people's friends jump in to try and protect them. Then a lot of people who are standing nearby, they don't really know what's happening, then they see police and I don't know what it is in Glasgow but we kind of have a mob mentality where we really hate the police. I myself probably felt exactly the same way back then. I knew that a lot of police were really nice people, just that I had a lot of encounters when I was younger with absolute pricks, so yeah. So this starts rippling throughout the entire crowd and obviously because people are kind of not very good at confrontation a lot of the time, instead of actually going up and like physically assaulting the police, they start throwing glass bottles from fucking miles away. Now obviously, if you've had about 8 or 9 beers, if you try and throw a glass bottle at a person from about 30, 40 yards away, chances are you're not going to fucking hit them. However, if that person is standing in a crowd of like 100 people, the chances are you're going to fucking hit at least someone else. So people are getting fucking hit with bottles, like glass fucking bottles, like left and right. And obviously the police see this and they're like, 
shit son, we need to fucking do something. So, police start fucking engaging people like in the, in the middle of this park. They're starting to like break into like skirmishes. This is, this fucking, but this devolves into like fucking medieval warfare dude. You got the motherfuckers at the back with like the trebuchet catapult shit throwing fucking glass bottles across the fucking battlefield. You've got like the, the spearmen at the front trying to fucking ch chase down police. It's fucking ridiculous dude. I am stand. I, I literally stood in the middle of this and I really wish I could find a photo. Because the photo that I remember seeing of myself in this was like me standing slightly on a hill as police horses are fucking charging up this shit. They are like, police horses come in, like the fucking cavalry, the knights come in on these horses and it's fucking insanity. They're like, they, they don't give a shit man, they're just like fucking pounding through like crowds of people. They're just like, get the fuck out the way and if you don't get the fuck out the way you're getting trampled by a fucking horse and they are fucking smashing through people like left and right people that aren't even fucking involved they're just unlucky enough to be like standing in the fucking wrong bit where the police want to go through it fucking devolves into chaos okay now i'm gonna put a video on screen of a guy this guy is probably gonna be dancing he's probably gonna be doing some silly shit you're probably not gonna believe me if i tell you that this guy got fucking arrested for punching a fucking horse in the head this man fucking punched a fucking horse in the head. I do not think you understand the fucking gravity of the situation. This fucking topless man, this fucking idiot <laughs> dancing around, punched a fucking horse in the fucking head. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and do you know what the fucking weird thing is? This guy became like a hero in Glasgow. In my city, this guy became a fucking like citywide hero. I, ha I actually have the guy fucking added on Facebook from 2011. I added him because I thought he was fucking hilarious for punching a horse in the head. I didn't actually see the horse punching itself. I did see him getting carted away. Like, he was getting dragged by his arms down the street from, like, by police. And I, that was how I saw him. And that's who I recognised him later on. And the only thing that he was screaming as he was getting dragged away was it was worth it. Like, that it was completely worth punching a horse. And that's not even the worst thing that happened to the horses, man. Somebody fucking stabbed the horse and the horse had to get fucking put down, man. Like, fuck. Like, it's one thing to, like, punch a horse. Like, I don't know if you've seen a horse. They're pretty fucking big. Like, if you punch a horse, you're not going to kill it. But, like, this, some other guy fucking stabbed the horse. And, like, shitloads of people were arrested and, like, shitloads of people were hospitalized and, like, really fucked up and beaten up about over this party. And the problem was, like, police can't really arrest everyone. They can only arrest, like, the worst defenders that they can get their hands on. Because, like, how do you fucking chase someone through? It's like Assassin's Creed, man. How the fuck do you chase someone through, like, a crowd of people? Really fucking hard. I went to a party after that in this run-down, beaten-up-ass warehouse with a bunch of people that I would never have ever considered fucking going with before. Like, some, some real, some real, some real bitches. And I was like pretty happy to get away from all the chaos. It was pretty, it was a fucking insane thing to see. Like horses, like huge fucking horses bounding past you every fucking second. Hundreds of people fighting around you. But we got to this warehouse afterwards and I was like, okay, that's the end of the chaos. The chaos, the chaos is finished. We are finished with the chaos. We got to this warehouse, it was in a shitty fucking rundown, beaten up ass warehouse, it literally didn't even have half a fucking roof, and it was right next to a fucking motorway, and I was like, you cannot pick a worse place for your underground rave. This isn't a fucking underground rave, this is a fucking overground rave. It hasn't even got a fucking roof that fits over the whole fucking thing. Anyway, we're at this, this rave, and the DJ hasn't even started yet, okay? The DJ hasn't even started playing music yet, there's just people showing up. People showing up to have a little dance, have a little drink. All of a fucking sudden, like, these fucking, get, these fucking brutes, these, these delinquents, these reprobates, come around the corner with, like, pipes and shit, and, and, like, start fucking smashing shit up and start beating the fuck out of people. And, literally, the only reason that I escaped this fucking pipe beating, this paddling, was because I vomited a few minutes beforehand. And uh, I managed to get dragged off the premises and taken home uh, by one of my friends. And I managed to save him from getting piped in the face. Because one of our, one of my friends did get piped in the face. My friend Joe got, uh, got a pipe in the face. He got hit in the face with a pipe. Uh, and my friend Connor didn't get hit with a pipe in the face because I vomited. So that was, that's, a good, that's a good silver lining to that story. 
I saved a friend getting piped in the face. Anyway, <laughs> that's been the story of how I was kind of involved in a riot. Just to make absolutely sure for the police watching this video, I was not actually involved in the riot. It was four years ago. You cannot prove anything at all. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you'd give it a little like. Aside from that, I'm sorry for rambling on a little bit, but I did hope you enjoy the video, and I hope you have a really, really great day.